there. Everybody's got a story. A fail, fail, yeah. fail, succeed. Fail, 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 succeed. Fail, succeed. fail, 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 succeed. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. My name is Kirk Nugent. I, I look to help people to integrate technology into their daily lives. And he's an engineer. He was making, you know, six figures, uh, but his public speaking business is making double. So I, I want to see how it all works to be an established show hopefully with a, a TV spot, if TV is still a thing. My name is Ravi Arya, father of two girls, six dogs, husband to a superwoman, a streetcar racer turned who and now social media marketer, the founder of Internet Mobiles, and I'm going to be teaching you something very interesting. Okay, so my name is Abhi Arya, father of two girls, six dogs, husband to a superwoman, a streetcar racer turned hotelier, now social media marketer, and founder of Internet Moguls. And I'm going to let today's uh, savvy, fashionable, young 24 year old looking friend of mine <laughs> to introduce himself with his own hero story. Over to you, my friend. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Kirk Nugent. I am affectionately known as the Geek Speaker Preacher. I am, I challenge everyday people to think holistically about their relationship to technology at home for their families and at work for career success. And I'm excited to chat with this audience today. Hope that you will check us out as well. Fantastic. It's a, almost the first time I've ever heard somebody use holistic living with technology because normally people want to throw technology out of their homes and say, you know what, this because of this that I have no holistic living. So uh -huh. before, before we get into that, tell us a little bit about where, where you were born, you know, what, 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 how weird were you as a kid? Because we were all weird and I want every <laughs> audience to say that people who are interviewed today, who are successful, who look so good, who uh -huh. do what they do, well, we're, we're all, we all come from weird places and that's yeah, okay yeah. We want to own our weirdness. So, absolutely. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, as I've said, my name is Kirk Nugent. I am the second of five kids uh, to born to two parents who are Jamaican and they migrated from Jamaica to the United States just before I was born. So I, I'm, my claim to fame is that I can run for president. I, I just barely made it in. Uh, so uh, what we we're we're in in I guess in in psychological circles you call us third culture kids. So you're not necessarily a part of the primary culture where you live. You're not necessarily a part of your parents' culture where they immigrated from. Uh, you kind of make your own culture. And so the term in the '90s was "Born Jamaicans," kind of a popular reggae song that came out, and that really does define uh, my background, especially uh, relating to being an American, but also Jamaican, but not quite either. So uh, interesting I mix, Jamaican. Yes, yes, yes. So I, 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 I have a, I had a twin. My twin died when I was two years old. Um, I do not remember this entire thing. Of course, they just hear stories from my parents and from older cousins and aunts and uncles. And they always refer to me as, as the twins. Like this is the guy who had the twin. And so there could be two of us, uh, but for whatever reason, um, as life would have it, that, that was not, that was not allowed to happen. But I feel like I am living uh, my life for two people. So I always feel like there's a, a higher purpose and a higher calling for which I was allowed to live. He died of SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. So nothing really was wrong with him. Just stopped breathing and didn't get him to the hospital in time. So uh, definitely something that has been a, a, a touchstone in my life. Something has really driven me, something that's caused me a lot of questions but also yeah. helped me to really have a, a different set of focus. Um, I, I'm not 24 years old. I am um, in my early 40s, uh, have worked in the technology field for a number of years at every level, uh, from entry level technician, all the way up to CIO and CTO for uh, large organizations spanning multiple countries. Uh, so had, have had a very interesting experience and perspective to share with where, where technology is concerned. As I've, I always say that technology is not the main point of any said conversation or business. It is a tool to be used. Whatever that business is looking to do, whatever space they're looking to conquer, they're looking to use technology to leverage it, to innovate, to get a leg up on their competition and to provide a stellar service that stands head and shoulders above their competition. And so, I look to help people to integrate technology into their daily lives, to, to make it something that isn't so taboo, that isn't so, I'm not a geek, I'm not a techie, but the truth of the matter is, and, and my students and in the higher edit circles that I worked with, they know this statement to be true. I've said it for years. 
I don't believe there any, are any non-IT jobs. Every job is an IT job. Every job has a technology component. And there is technology specific to every discipline, every field, every, uh, uh, every training, every, every certification, every degree, everything that you could actually do, there is technology that's specific to that platform or to that area or arena. And understanding that technology can be a leg up, can really be the difference maker. One of the reasons why I stood head and shoulders above my colleagues and was picked out uh, from the crowd to, to be groomed for leadership is because I sought to understand not only the technology side of things, but understand it from the perspective of the business for which I was working. So while working for NASA as an entry level technician, uh, working for government, you know, it was a completely different environment. And then working for T. Rowe Price, uh, which is a finance firm, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. I worked on the trade desk with portfolio managers, with traders and equity and fixed income, had to deal with stuff like Reuters and Stockval and Bloomberg. And it was an interesting perspective to have coming from a technology standpoint and really sought to understand what it was they were doing so that I could recommend solutions uh, that really stood out for them, that really made the difference for them. And I think that's one of the reasons uh, that's really made the difference in my life. Then worked for an NGO, a uh, global NGO in, in Silver Spring, Maryland, and for which I was able to take an assignment and work in South Africa for a number of years, nice. uh, which was assignment of my life. Uh, we went there with uh, a one-year-old and a four-month-old. Don't do this. <laughs> do not do this. Don't move with a four-month-old. We were literally waiting for her uh, passport to be printed. Uh, once we got it printed, we had to take one more month. We got her passport at three months. We got had to take one more month to get the uh, work permit and um, accompanying visa in there so that we could actually make the move to South Africa. But that was the experience of our lives. We then moved back here to the United States and, and worked in higher ed as a CIO and CTO in upper level management as an executive and really began to understand the world of the executive suite, um, understanding some of the perspectives, the 10,000 level foot view that, that they often talk about that uh, what we really don't see when you're at certain levels of an organization. And so you don't understand sometimes why certain decisions are made and why we pivoted and went a different way when it made sense to us at certain levels that we should have gone a different direction. But uh, really good perspective. Now I'm working on my own, I have my own business. Uh, called Composition, and we do media consulting and web design. My wife does the web design, I do the media consulting. And I've got a YouTube channel called How It All Works. It's youtube.com slash Kirk R. Nugent. And How It All Works is a live show we do every Monday at 5.30 Central Standard Time. And we kind of get into different career sets, career fields and skill sets that uh, are little known or better yet, not often heard from. I like to get people on the show who you don't often hear from, people who are behind the scenes, maybe an animator. I had a guy on a couple of weeks back who did a lot of the animation on the movie Scoob, which was released nice. uh, directly to the internet because of the pandemic. Um, and so he was able to give us from his perspective, his workflow, what, what's life like for him? Um, how did he get there? And so it's a really cool show, uh, highlighting some unique skill sets and career fields, uh, seeking to understand how all these parts fit together to produce what we as consumers consume. We see it on the big screen or we sit in a concert hall and we know that there's a sound guy back there, but what is it like to be that sound guy? So I, I, want, I seek to help people understand how those puzzle pieces fit together uh, to help them have that aha moment and see the light bulb come on so that they can figure out how it all works. And that's the title of the show. It's the title of my channel. We do a lot of live video strategy on that channel. I help people to convert what they have been doing in person to uh, virtual. And so that's kind of my story. It's, 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 I, I know I've taken up a little bit of time there, but I wanted to share uh, the broader picture of yeah. how I attack and approach different things. Uh, so yeah, yeah. And, and I, I hope I shared some weirdness there as well. And that was fantastic. And that makes you my second most favorite speaker after Obama. <laughs> wow. 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 Because that's I, love a big... I love when you said technology is not, in, technology is not different. Technology is in everything. Technology yes, it is, is in studies, is in education. The it way is. you said it, I was like, were you, were you ever a preacher? 
I, I was not, but I do get that all the time. A lot of people yeah. say, man, you, you, you really missed your calling. You should have gone into preaching. <laughs> well, 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 you're, you're, you're a preacher of a different guy now. That's true. And, uh, That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And because everything that every time we take the people from darkness to light, uh, it's, ah, it's, it's preaching, right? So a lot of people, absolutely. Say, your Monday absolutely. Shows so yeah. Making yeah, that that's good. And so, and can you, you know, I, I couldn't help, but, uh, you know, sort of, uh, my mind got uh, fixated on what, when you said that for the first time you were introduced to the 37, 30, 10,000 feet view. view. Yes. And, and, and so you, so you understood, you understood a lot of people who are, who are maybe right now at a level where they don't understand, they're working for a company as an agency partner or a technology yes. partner, or maybe yes. inside, they don't understand the 10,000 level. And so therefore there's conflict and there's, you know, there's mm. not, there's no, there's, even if there's less conflict, there's more, there's less resonance with why they're doing what they're doing. So yes. would you like to share, uh, you know, maybe a particular example or a story on, you know, how... I definitely would. I mean, I can't give you the specifics, but I remember yeah. uh, there was a decision that President's Council was was deciding on. We were discussing, and it was a major decision. It was going to affect the entire campus. I was working at a, a university at the time, and it was going to really have a, ramifications across the board, students, faculty, staff, everybody. And I remember uh, having a conversation with some of my team members. I was in charge of IT, so I had several directors working for me and then teams under them. And I remember talking to them about some of their concerns and some of their uh, uh, fears and, and some of the things they would like to see. And coming into President's Council with my notes, hoping to really make a difference. And then yep. our president just kind of sat us all down and he laid out the facts. And then at the end of him saying that, he said, and we can't tell anybody else outside of this room. And I remember saying, wow. And, and one of the things he said to me later on was leadership is knowing exactly why a decision must be made and never being able to defend yourself. And so oh, he, wow. as the leader, had to take those hits, right? So the entire campus was basically dogging him out. And I just, I had to say, stay quiet because there's no way for me to explain why he arrived at the decision. And to be clear, I think if given the facts, every last one of those people would have arrived at the same decision, but we couldn't share those details. And that to me is, is, is probably the best example I could share about that 10,000 level foot view, right? Um, in terms of being an executive leader and recognizing here are here is the the the, the metrics. Here is the way that it works, right? Uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. That, that perspective but, does shift how you are able to work but, in every level but, of the organization. Mm -hmm. But do you also feel sometimes that, you know, uh, I mean, it's a lot of, sometimes it's data, sometimes it's the gut, sometimes it's a mix of data and gut, and mm -hmm. sometimes you get it wrong and then you fail and you keep moving on. So yeah. as somebody who works with the, has worked in the C-suite as part of the executive mm -hmm. team and also reported to people in different roles, uh, how would you recommend people who are watching this and working with senior executives on a mission when you don't see eye to eye with your senior management uh, uh, and you want them to lay it out, be more transparent and, you know, like you said, sometimes just go with the flow because somebody's yeah. got it planned. It's, your team is to be a soldier and the soldier goes as pointed by the general. Uh, yeah. but, do you, but do you feel that sometimes the senior management gets it wrong and they're also, you know, like entrepreneurs get it wrong. Senior management gets yeah, it wrong. Yeah, fail, fail, yeah. fail, succeed. Fail, 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 succeed. Fail, succeed. fail, 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 <laughs> fail, succeed. So we don't know when that comes. So at that time, how does an agency owner, which is working as a technology partner, or maybe I've got a job as a tech, how do I continue to keep faith in that management or that company when I know that, you know, so. Yeah. There's a couple aspects there. I think part of it has to do with um, leadership, right? And so what is your leader's leadership style? Like if your leader is one of those who's very authoritarian, who wants what they have said to be followed without any question, then you're kind of in a tight spot. And, and you as a worker need to now be cognizant of that fact. And you need to understand what your leadership style is. Not right. from your perspective going to your subordinates. I mean, your perspective towards your leader. Um, if your style is not conducive to work with somebody who's authoritarian, you may need to find a different leader. And this is a, a very critical point. A lot of people lo look at jobs in terms of fit from the perspective of, can I do the job? 
Uh, you really want to take time in your interviews. I learned this as, as, a, as a young guy coming out of college. I went on uh, over 200 interviews trying to find a job. That first job was so elusive. But one of the things I learned in that time was you've got to understand the person that you're going to be working for. You got to ask questions that are give you insight into that person and the way they work and the way they think. Now, as best you can, of course, in the interview process, a lot of people are trying to show their best face, uh, but you do want to make sure you understand that person because that dynamic is really going to determine a lot of what, whether you can be successful in that role or not, depending on your work style. But a lot of people are still trying to find themselves. So they will adapt to the leadership style of the person that they're working for, which right. is also not necessarily a good thing, but it's just the way that the world works. The other piece that I want to mention is what I said before, seeking to understand the business, the industry with, within which you work. I don't care if you're I don't care what your role is, but if you're in a specific industry, like I, I you know, you could be in finance, but still be in higher ed. Yep. But if you're in the higher ed industry, you got to understand how that industry works. What are the norms? What are the rises? What are the things that cause the company or the organization or institution to rise and fall? And when you understand those things, you can actually speak intelligently. And I think you can open up uh, doors to have open conversation. It's, for me, one of the things I know from my predecessor, the guy I replaced when I got to uh, this specific university, he was a technical guy. Uh, so there wasn't a lot of desire on the part of leadership to really engage him around educational topics, uh, service learning outcomes, uh, you know, advisors and class schedules and bulletins and research and master's degree. And I, he didn't want to engage around any of that stuff. But because I took a vested interest in the industry that within which I was working so that I can apply technology that was relevant, then I was able to have some more meaningful conversations at a, at a different level. And I think when you do that, you're able to have that rapport. Uh, where you can actually hear from them some of the more, you know, finer details of why a certain decision was going to be made. And that does help you to swallow it, <laughs> uh, what, what may seem like a bad decision. But that last piece is how does the leader frame the decision? Not, not at the standpoint from which we failed, but when they're making the decision, the decision, if they frame it in a way that is like, okay, this is the way forward, I am 500% sure, and we're going to move this way, then if there's a failure, it's difficult. But if this leader frames the decision as, look, folks, based on all that we have seen, I've gathered data from the four corners of the organization, and this is the way we feel is going to be the best for all of us. And we're going to make this move together for the better or for the worse. If, if that's the environment that your leader has fostered, it's much easier to accept uh, a decision that you may not necessarily agree with, and especially better when that decision may end in failure, you can now come back and say, hey, you know, we tried it. That wasn't the best thing for us to do. Here, we're going to pivot and we're going to shift in a different direction. That leader gets a lot more grace uh, just by the way that they framed the decision. You know, this is what you said in the last five minutes. It's, I, I don't know if I can transcript this and put the keywords online and find enough meaningful conversations like the one we had in the last five minutes wow, on this wow. particular topic. Because how you go in as a technology person, you know, at whatever age, 24, 34, 44, and you're reporting to someone <laughs> and everybody yeah. says you should have resonance with the outcome and all of that. And yes. here we're talking about real world problems that resonance sometimes is, you know, it, you, it's, it's, it's a moving uh, target. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, so excellent. I love that. I mean, I'm just, because every time I'm thinking from, I'm, I'm always doing these interviews from two people's perspectives. One is right. mine. Say, oh, yes. I get richer and learn more. And then the people who are watching, I'm like, wow, right, somebody's right. going to say, so this is so beautiful. I want to say thank you so much for the, the last oh, five yeah. minutes for pure fire. Okay, we're man. Going, thank you so much. I appreciate we're, that. We're going, to, we're going to something lighter and then we go back, you know, switch tracks again. Sure. Um, uh, we had the opportunity to do, to do a get to know each other session last week yes, when we got to yes. know each other and then now we're doing the final interview and that was amazing because I feel I already have a friend in you and it's you know it's easier to do interview and all of that and Absolutely. Uh, so so that was so fantastic when you broke down your office setting if you don't mm -hmm. mind can we just do that once more you have a I, uh, you have a I great have, 
sound, mic. I love the purple light at the back. It's a nice <laughs> studio. Can you, for all people who are beginning their video journeys or a YouTube or studio, or whatever, can you just break that down for us from sound to uh, lighting uh, to video? I, I have moved one of my cameras to a different machine. So uh, it may take me a second to kind of get this thing where I can, uh, or I can move it around like we did before, but I, no I definitely can do that. But even while I'm getting this set up, well, one of the things that we talked about last time was just making sure you, your basics are covered. A lot of people often ask me, in fact, I, I had a speaking engagement this past Sunday uh, where you know the, the, the main thrust of the presentation was you know, live streaming best practices for faith-based institutions. And one of the things I, I'm often asked is like, can you give me an equipment list? You know, what should I yeah. buy? I want to go out and get some gear. I want to, I want to live stream like a pro. And I'm saying to folks, you, you want to make sure I want to, I want to get my, I talk with my hands, but, but you want to make sure that your gear acquisition does not outpace your ability to use the gear. Right. You well, want to learn, learn along with the gear. And, and so if you have a phone now or if you have a laptop with a webcam and all you're using is the built in microphone or if you've got a set of headphones that have a little mic on the side, start there. That's that's a great place to start. And then when you've maximized that thing, you'll tell you'll know exactly when that is when you've maximized that value on what you now the gear becomes a limiting factor to your live stream, then you that's the natural time to now start looking to grow your gear and to start buying um, um, other equipment. Let me plug this in real quick. Um, yeah. So we can You're probably one of the few people who don't need a mic to have that baritone voice. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it, it, I have been getting some interesting compliments on my on my mic and on my voice. So I um, I do I do some voiceovers as well as public. Next time speaking. somebody says, oh, which mic do you use? You say, uh, excuse me, I've never used a mic in my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what That's... My, 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 my daddy gave me. Yeah, that's it. That's it, man. It's, it's all natural. That's, <laughs> that's a whole new song, man. That's good. I'm, I'm just pulling up what I pulling up this uh, camera here. We're going to make a switch and then we'll be able to uh, bring that in as well. So let's see if we can get this going. All right. So. Yeah. It's not it's not picking up this camera, man. I apologize. I no, no, Don't. no problem. Whatever, whatever, whatever works. That's absolutely fine. Um, Go I'm going to see if I can do this one other way. Uh, I'm not certain if this will work, but I'm going to try it because, hey, that's that's all we can do. And that's, that's all we can do. Fine. This is a 50 second video that I took. Um, I'm going to try and play it and see if if we can, you know, at least show that view of what I've got set up. Awesome. Uh, made some changes actually to the, the setup here. All right, let's get that. And you already done your gym for the day? Oh, yes. I uh, did my yeah, gym your morning, for the day. Your morning four hours. <laughs> uh, because my not... friend, you know what? I bring this up every time I speak to you because when I look at you, I'm like, my God, we're the same age. I, I swear, I promise you. <laughs> Since the time we started this interview, mm. I had a I had a massive headache in the morning, and I'm 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 getting better, but uh, I was like today I don't need to go to the gym. But the, since the minute I've been talking to you, I'm like I I cannot not go to the gym. Oh wow! I have I have, I yeah I definitely yeah I try to get in a workout every day. Here I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a switch. Uh, I'm hoping this is gonna work out well. So let me get the mic switched first gonna switch to this mic and I'm are you still hearing me that's the question oh, oh yes absolutely yes you're still hearing me good um and then I'm going to make a switch on my camera and then that should do it there it is so oh, lovely. here's um let me move my my video around here uh so I've, I just I literally I, I think I've made some changes even while since we talked last I think so um I, think so. I had I had a two monitor set up with my Mac mini but I just got the um the MacBook M1 
with the M1 processor, which is uh, really good for several live stream platforms, uh, although it does have some significant drawbacks in other areas. But this is just giving you an idea of uh, what that what uh, my my setup looks like. Um, I was doing a, a video where I was showcasing how to connect multiple webcams to your system. And so here you're seeing there's a webcam on top of my iPad. There's a webcam up top there. Um, as wow. a, of course, I have the, the webcam for my, my MacBook, two other webcams on top of the monitor here. And then, of course, the camera that I'm using now, which is my uh, DSLR. And I've just got them connected into a, a USB hub. And that is connected to this dongle that takes up both of my USB-C ports uh, on my Mac macbook pro so yeah so, let me just, so so number one so uh, what, what camera is that the sony what the sony a7 II camera it's a great camera um it's a uh, you know the a7 III is kind of the standard bearer right now and then you know of course you know apple uh, sony just came out with the a1 which everybody's salivating over but it's almost seven thousand dollars but either way sony is a great 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 platform their color science is phenomenal um, I, I just love what what their camera or what it does. The camera that I'm using to record this video, however, is my phone. It's a it's a Pixel, uh, Pixel Five or no Pixel Four, Pixel Four XL. I, I didn't get the latest model, but it is a great camera of, on my phone as well. So this is what I'm saying is like you have these these different um, perspectives. I think you know depending on what your show is going to look like, or if you're going to do a live stream, if you want to do interviews like Avi's doing with me. There is, you know, some things you want to look into. What is your personality? My personality lends itself to me having some lights on the floor uh, to, you know, get that shallow depth of field from my camera. That's why I have the lens that I have and set myself in that focal length. But all of those are technical terms. I want to, I want to say this piece as well. The camera is not just for streaming. Like right? I would never recommend this camera for streaming only. I would, I, would, I would recommend a different camera for streaming if you're gonna use a DSLR or, or um, a Micro Four Thirds camera, I would recommend a, a A6400. But uh, the Logitech C920 or Logitech C922 or even the Brio 4K, those are great webcams that will give you a great color and great picture quality as you go into these Zoom rooms or into whatever live stream that you're looking to do. So, and so why, why do you have uh, so many webcams? So that was for the purposes of a video. I was I was showcasing okay. how you can connect multiple webcams to one computer and add them all into StreamYard. So that video is actually available on my my YouTube channel right now. Multi-camera stream in StreamYard without a camera switcher. So a lot of people use the A10 Mini to be able to switch between cameras. Here I was just showing folks. I've got a bunch of webcams connected directly to my computer, and I can switch between. Uh, all those cameras in StreamYard as if it was a switcher. So uh, that's that's oh. the reason for that. I actually borrowed them from all over the house. I had my, took my <laughs> wife's, I took my son's, I took my daughter's, I took a different one that I have uh, sitting on another computer downstairs. So I grabbed all of them, connected them in here and then used it for that video. On a normal basis, I really just have the Sony a7 II and then I have this Logitech C920, uh, which so for some reason so, right so now- Very quickly, I, very quickly for the audience, if uh, sure. one DSLR on top and one- uh, uh, maybe, you know, an angular webcam, how do you yeah. connect both and go between either of them? So it depends on what application you're using. Uh, for me, I use a product called Ecamm Live, and that's how you're seeing my video right now, how you're seeing me as picture in picture. Uh, Ecamm has multiple scenes that I, that I can choose from. I mean, he, I can go back to this one. It has my signature on the screen. I can move to this one. And this has a space for me to do a tutorial. So I would have my screen up on this other side. Um, I have a, a, a multiple different scenes that um, I, I can switch from. Of course, I'm going back to the one that, that we were in earlier. And, and you're still seeing that video. I'm, yeah. I can mute myself. I can mute the video. I've muted the video, actually. So you're not hearing uh, the audio coming from there. But yeah, this. This program, Ecamm Live, really gives me a lot of flexibility and allows me to kind of pick what people see when I come into a studio. I'll give you an example. Um, here's a um, here's a presentation that I did just Sunday, <laughs> just this past Sunday. So um, here's uh, here's here's one of the slides from that presentation. 
you know, what, nice. what should be our approach? And of course, this is how, so this is how I would look in Ecamm, in Zoom, and I, I would I'd be I'm full screen. I'm, I mean, as in, you're seeing my whole camera, it's not cropped, uh, but then you're also seeing the different things on the screen and I can just kind of move through the slides uh, very seamlessly uh, without having to do a whole lot there. So this is the title, uh, title slide for the presentation. So, and then, uh, you know, at the, at the bottom, I, had, I did have the question slide. So, you know, people could find me, follow me, all that other good stuff. So, you know, just kind of, again, Ecamm Live and its virtual camera really gives you that ability to be very versatile. Uh, there's a new program called, mm -hmm, I don't know if you've heard of it, MMHMM. Um, it oh, also really? Gives, um, that's yeah, what it's called? Mm -hmm. It's called MMHMM.app, A-P-P. Uh, it's a great program. It is a virtual camera and virtual microphone. You can go into Zoom. You can have your entire presentation behind you. So, so cool uh, how they're able to do that. I'm trying to see if I can maybe show a, a small clip of, of me doing some stuff with um, M MH is what I have been calling because I got so tired of saying. Mm, of mm -hmm. course. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here, let me see if I can if I can if I can pull up a uh, pull up a clip real quick and see if we can't show a piece of that. Uh, let's see here. That's countdown. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's under movies, and this is the. That's a live test. This I think this is the one here. <clears throat> so this is the beginning of the video. I'm I'm showing it. I'm showing the video. I'm showing the product now. Yeah. Uh, so this is the website mmhmm.app, and of course, this video is is the latest video on my YouTube channel right now. I just released it on Sunday night. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the actual um, application. This is what it looks like, and uh, somewhere here, I go into. Um, showing you what it looks like inside Ecamm. So this is what my desktop looks like. This is Ecamm, all the floating windows. And you can see there that under the microphone, MMHMM is <laughs> available. Uh, let me let me scrub a little further to show you. So there's my presentation. And you can see that I can move myself to be bigger, smaller. I can, I can make it big, you know, take up the whole screen behind me. So it's basically a green screen. I can actually show a video. And then there is a... Oh, there's another piece here. Okay, here it is. This is Zoom. So you can see in Zoom, I can come in and be uh, on screen in Zoom with my presentation behind me. That's the power of this platform. That's fantastic. Um, and what about the much... virtual mic you said? How does that work? Yeah, so you would select in Zoom. Um, I think that's what I was actually showing a second ago there. Yep, there it is. I'm showing you connecting, selecting the camera. And so here I'm joining the audio and there I'm selecting the microphone. That's the, so see, so right there, I paused it right there where you can see that, I know it's small, but it, under yeah. select microphone, you can see MMHMM audio virtual, right? So that's a microphone. And so what you do is you add your microphone to, mm -hmm, um, and then if you're playing a video or if you're playing a clip, or if you have some music you wanna play, add that to your, your mm -hmm session. And then it will play into Zoom along with your microphone. So it's kind of a pairing. So it pairs both your audio and the audio of uh, the, 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 the video that you want to play. Yeah. To, so you're, you're, you know, all your attendees or whoever's in Zoom can hear it as well. So it Got gives it. you both virtual camera and a virtual microphone, which is mm -hmm. very versatile, uh, very, very powerful setup that they've, they've got there. So I, I will say, you know, if you, if you'd catch that video where I was talking about this, I, I made sure to tell folks. I will 100% put a link to this and I'm already oh, making sure. notes that I need to look at that video right after yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. That it's, it is, it is still very much new. It's, um, it's out for Mac and it's in beta for Windows and they're taking beta testers. So a friend of mine signed up to be a beta tester. I signed up as well, I haven't heard back, but a friend of mine was able to get back from them. So he has it installed on his Windows computer right now. So it is gonna be both, you know, compatible for both platforms, although not quite yet. And so that's, that's you know, you wanna keep that in mind, it's new. So there's gonna be some bugs. We're gonna learn yeah. and grow along with the platform, but I think they're on the right track. Very easy to use. You can use it with any platform. I've used it with StreamYard. I, I showed it in the video. I showed it being used with Ecamm, StreamYard, and Zoom. But of course, any application on your computer that takes a webcam 
uh, that that application mm -hmm, can be used in there as your Lovely. primary webcam. So Lovely. yeah, I'm glad to and, share and what, that. Yeah. What headphones do you have? So I I have uh, I have a uh, uh, these are they're 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 called me um, me something rather man I'm trying to remember what the name of it is. Let me see if I can show you that too real quick here. There we go. Move that over some. I'm gonna try and bring uh, bring this screen in if I can. Um, At the gym the other day, I lost one one of my earphones from the I AirPods. Oh and, wow. Uh, my brand colors are red. So everything is red. So when I got the AirPods about two years ago, I yeah. got, I, 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 was, I sent them to Dubai, a friend of mine, uh, there was a custom agency there and they turned them red and our custom colors and we had a signature on that. And I lost oh, that wow. red one. So it's painful. I can't get the same one again now. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's tough, man. Yeah. I, I feel for you there. Cause that, I know that, that those can be hard to, to find. Yeah. Okay, so here's Google Chrome. I'm gonna share that. And so I'm just gonna change this camera to this one. And that should allow me to share something here. So yeah, here we go. Um, so kit.co slash Kirk R. Nugent is my gear page. Um, and if you, if you go there, kit.co slash Kirk R. Nugent, if you go to my office setup, this right here at the top, actually. So this is the nice. camera I'm using. This is the uh, microphone I'm using, the bundle. Uh, so I have the headphones, I have the board, the soundboard, and I have the microphone. And then these are the headphones. So they, they called me Audio Sport. Um, you know, they're over the ear, they're noise canceling. They, they really are great headphones. And they, um, they give you that on TV look where you can't really yeah, I know, tell, I know. you know, from, from a straight on shot, you can't really tell uh, that I've got headphones on. So. Uh, but yeah, there's a there's a ton of uh, a great of, of great things here. Uh, this bundle that I've, I'm showing with this camera is what you need if you're going to stream with a camera. You got to have the battery pack. You got to have the mini HDMI to HDMI, and you're, you're going to need some capture cards. Um, and I recommend this uh, this this uh, this tripod. What do you call this? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it, 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 that's where my that's what my camera is on right now. So the that's, unipod. That's it. Yeah, but it's really stiff and and firm. Uh, it's a great, oh. it's a great, um, a great option. So yeah, kit.co slash Kirk R. Nugent. That's where a lot of the, a lot of the items I I have are the lights that are on the floor behind me. These are them, the Miki four that. pack. Yeah, and they're, these are not, you know, these are relatively inexpensive. So we're not talking about stuff that's going to break the bank. And then you know, right above my head, I do have uh, this light, uh, which is which has really served me well. So you know, these are these are some of the things that are that I have and. Um, I mean, it's not necessary Fantastic. Fantastic. to have, you know, to, to, again, I always tell folks, you know, you, you want to go, go small before you go big. In fact, I have a video here called home studio hacks right on kit.co slash Kirk R. Nugent. And I kind of show people from using my laptop sitting on the table to putting it on a, a raised, uh, um, 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 I guess holder, and then using the webcam and then upgrading it to using the, uh, the camera that I have, and then even putting some lights in, some colors. So I go through all those steps in this video um, for people to kind of get a feel for what does that upgrade look like? Okay, so if this is what my look is, what would adding color to my my background look like? And well, how would that appear on screen? Um, but yeah, I, I, I like I said, live video strategies is some, something that I'm really passionate about. And I'm happy to be able to share that here as well. That's fantastic. I'm going to link that up as well. So uh, people who want to go live. So we spoke about gear. We spoke about strategy. We spoke about start small before you go big. We spoke right. about bringing your own personality, all of that. Now, in terms of going live, uh, you, we so, you spoke about Ecamm, StreamYard, all of these tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything else you'd like to say in terms of, you know, take more questions so that there's more engagement. Like when people go yeah. live in, in the beginning, when they're starting off, they see less engagement and that makes them shut off forever. Yeah. So what yeah. would be your tip for those guys who are just starting out? You know, there's the, the, the old, there's something we all probably did um, as kids. And this is, goes back to that weirdness factor, Avi, that uh, we need to kind of tap into. Um, and that is having an internal dialogue, but having it out loud on screen. If you're going to go live, like I'm li if we're, me and Avi were live, then we could talk to one another as well as engage with the comments. But if you're live by yourself, um, that internal dialogue, just make sure that it's not only in your head. 
You know what Love I mean? It. So, so if you're, hey, if you think something is funny, laugh about it and, <laughs> and, and, and tell people like, ha, ah, I'm laughing because da, 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 da. And it, it just pulls them into the conversation. They can't be heard, but they're in the conversation with you. And any way you can engage in the comments, any way you can ask people, hey, uh, what do you think about so-and-so? Let me know. Let me know. I'm looking at the comments. Come on. I'm waiting for you to respond. What do you think? What do you think about this gear website? How many of you, you guys use kit.co? I mean, that is that is that a thing? Is that is it great? Is there a better one? Talk to me. I'm, I'm new to this. Talk to me. That's getting engagement. And it, it immediately, I mean, somebody could be scrolling past and they see, you know, hear you saying, talk to me about this site. And they're like, oh, what site? Uh, let me, let me pause for a second. I want to, I want to see what site he's talking about. Right. And oh, kit.co. Yeah. I know that site. I've got some good guys on that site. So they come in and they type in, yeah, I follow a couple of people that are on kit.co. Okay, cool. Hey, uh, Hey, um, uh, Tom in the chat. I see that you follow a couple of people. Tell me who you follow. I want to follow some people too. I'm new to this site. The engagement helps uh, with the back and forth. If you're doing a live stream, one of the things you want to be able to do is to create a two-way conversation. This is one of the things that I teach folks is you want to create a two-way conversation with the people who are on the other side of the camera. You, you got to make sure that you're talking to the camera. You got you to keep your focus on the camera. I'm, I'm tempted to look over at Avi because he's right over here, but I want to talk. I, I want to be present on camera. So I want to keep my focus on the camera. And, and I want to make sure that, you know, if there's something in my head that I'm thinking about saying, or it's just kind of crossing my mind, don't be afraid to just let that out. Like, man, you know, I, I just got, I just got, I just got this cup, these cups in yesterday and we just launched the merch page for how it all works. And it's, it's, I'm still very excited about this. So I've got, I've got coffee on my brain because I've got this cup here. You see what I'm saying is just allow people into your, into your environment. You know, in the production world, we call it breaking the third wall. By breaking the third wall, it was like, you know, every production set has three walls. And then the third wall is where the audience was watching. So if you, any of your favorite sitcoms from back in the day um, that were not, you know, that were filmed quote unquote live in front of a studio audience that used to be a thing, they had this third wall and you never broke the third wall. You didn't look at at the audience and say something, you're always kind of off camera, you're talking to the person or in the scene that you were you were with, but you didn't necessarily break that third wall. In live streaming, it's, the, it's a flipped um, con concept. You wanna constantly break that third wall. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, let people know. I can tell you um, what, like what I did when I was with Avi um, the other day, last week when we were chatting, I took the camera and I showed him everything. I mean, I just went everywhere and showed it to him and it breaks that third wall. Cause see right now, you know, when you're live streaming, you want to frame up your shot, you know, so everything that's in shot right now is very intentional. Um, and so if I zoomed out even just a little bit more, you'd be like, whoa, what's going on in his office? Um, <laughs> you, you saw some of the videos that were of my desk and everything like that. It's, it's kind of a snake pit. I've tried to clean it up. It's, it could be better. Uh, but it works. It's functional. And in terms of what you see on camera, this is what it is. But when people get a chance to see something just slightly outside of what you have in your frame, it lets them know, oh, he's a real guy. He's a real person, just like me. Oh, you know, I, I'm messy sometimes too. Yeah, I would like to be cleaner, but it sometimes doesn't work out that way. That level of humanity, that, that shared experience that you have with your audience, it goes a long way to, you know, galvanizing people around whatever it is you want to share. And everybody's got a story. And that's the, you know, I'm going to stop there. Everybody's got a story. Everybody has something that they're, they're, they need to share. They have, everybody has a tribe that's out there. that's waiting for you to get online and put your unique spin on content out there because they're waiting. They're literally waiting. So, you know, being able to do, the, employ some of these techniques and practices really helps to engage folks. And it really helps to, you know, tip that nose up in terms of your numbers and analytics for your live stream. So, yeah. Wow, that was so real and so fantastic. Uh, Kirk, we're coming to the end of the interview. I had two more questions left. Sure, One sure. Was, uh, where can people find you? Do you have a co course? Do you have a, a, a website? Where, for people who want to interact with you deeper, where should they go? 
Well, I like I said before, I do have a, you know, I do have a, a, web, a couple of websites um, where I work uh, with my wife. Like I said, we do media media consulting and we do web design, and that is for a company called Composition. That's her you know her company name. It, spelled with a K because my all of us are K's. Her name is Kanik, my name is Kirk, our kids' names all start with K's. And so we decided instead of a C, we're gonna change it to K. And that's nice. the name of our business is Composition. You know, so when you say that like that, I can never forget the website name. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, um, I, always, I always make this joke. We had a, we had, was myself and her and then our son, Carson with a K. And then we had to have a four, a, a second child. So we was four of us. We didn't want to leave it at KKK, you know, we just, <laughs> We didn't want to leave it there. So, but yeah, Carson, uh, so Kirk, Kani, Carson, Kenzie, that's, that's us. And we, 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 our business is called Composition. I'm trying to find that question screen so I can show that real quick for people who are, you know, wanting to, to see that on screen. So yourcomposition.com is the website for our business. Howitallworks.com is the website for the show. And so there's what, that's where the merch page is. It's where we have some of the latest stuff that we're doing on the YouTube channel. A lot of the stuff I'm doing right now is on YouTube and it is free. You know, there's an entire 31 day course on best best tips for live streaming that is available. It's a playlist nice. available on my YouTube channel. So you can you can get that there. KirkNugentSpeaks.com is another space that, you know, where I do a lot of my public speaking, where I do my voiceovers from. And I will be launching some courses on the Kirk Nugent Speaks platform. Uh, so that's that's actually something that's going to be coming mid year uh, this year. So we're working on some of that stuff right now. Lovely. And my, my last question is, you know, um, most of us are big fans of Gary Vaynerchuk. I had the opportunity to meet him a couple of times in his office and we went for wow, lunch wow. and all of that. Oh, yes, so absolutely. That, yes. And so that so he says, work hard in the micro, but be patient for the macro. Yes. So in five years, where do we see how it all works dot com? Um, in five years, man. So, and I, I, this is such a great question. This is something that I, I often um, do with clients that coaching clients that are, are, are with me trying to figure out what are their next moves? What are the next steps trying to get past that mental block? Um, I asked them, you know, if no, if money was not a barrier, you know, yeah. all things being equal, you, you, you could actually achieve it. Where would you want to see yourself? And so I, I want to see how it all works as a full fledged show. I uh, want to see it um, integrated into educational uh, scenarios and systems. I want schools to utilize some of the content that we have. We interview people on the show who pe you just never know uh, what that perspective is and how much money can be made in some of these spaces. Um, yeah. A good friend of mine is a public speaker and he's an engineer. He was making you know six figures, uh, but his public speaking business is making double. You know, who knew that? And, yeah. and how do you, what are the mechanics? How did he make the transition? Those are the kind of conversations that we have. And I often get here from parents um, uh, uh, who have college age kids or high school age kids, and they're watching the show and they're like, man, this was phenomenal. You know, this kind of opened up our eyes and our minds to this entire space, this entire world, and how we can actually be successful and how we can pursue some of these dreams. So I, I want to see how it all works to be an established show hopefully with a, a TV spot, if TV is still a thing uh, in five years, maybe maybe Netflix, I don't know, but some kind of a streaming platform. Um, definitely want to see it integrated more into the educational arena for people to learn and experience and tangibly feel what it's like to be in some of these career, uh, career paths. But I also want to, you know, really ramp up my public speaking. I'd love to uh, rest on that public speaking career. Um, and, and in order to do that, that's why I'm trying to get a lot of these classes and courses recorded and done, because there's a lot that I need. I know I need to teach. Um, it cannot be done in a one public speaking session. That's why being able to go and speak and then refer people to the course is so yeah. critical. Um, and I, and I, I think there's a lot of people out there. If you have the skills, if you, if you do anything with excellence, I really feel like it's it, there's there's a space for us to create these courses and allow people to consume them, um, because honestly, I don't know what the education system is going to look like in a number of years, because people are learning much more from 
uh, when they're online in, you know, as they say, YouTube University. And one of the reasons for that is simply this, is I, I want to end with this last point. I know this is our last question. I um, often hear people say, you know, I'm not really a techie. I, you know, I get this question, all, you know, this comment all the time. I'm not really in media. I, 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 don't, I don't get it. It's just foreign to me. It's just not my thing. And what I say to them, and I said this on my show last night, what you're actually saying to people is that you don't have anything that's motivating you enough to learn the technology. That's actually right. what you're saying. And, and once you find that thing, trust me, all the rest of the stuff is going to just float away. You're, you're sure. going to realize like, hey, I'm elbow deep in this tech and this gear right. and I'm working it. I'm, I'm making it happen because you have a motivation. So find yeah. the motivation first. Don't get the gear. Don't look at the you know top YouTubers or the top live streamers and say, I want to be like them. What do you want to share with people? Figure out that part. And if that is your motivating factor, all the rest of the pieces will fall into place. You'll figure out the rest because you're motivated. Uh, and that is, I think, the piece that we're missing in the education system. People are learning just for the sake of learning. And you're going from grade to grade just for the sake of moving on. But what is the motivating factor? You know, you approach that history exam. Why do you want to know this stuff? That is the piece I think has been missing. And that's why I think YouTube does much better uh, than traditional school, because people are searching for what they want to learn. And when they find it, they'll watch it 50 times over until they master that thing and they can go on to something else. Uh, th so that is that is absolutely where I want to see um, myself in a number of years. And, I, and one of the things I wanted to leave with the audience, find your motivation, find your why, figure out that piece. It's so, 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 so critical. Number one search on YouTube today, probably been that way for the last six, seven months, purpose, purpose. So find wow. your why, find your motivation. That's going to be the driving factor for anything that you hope to achieve, anything you want to be successful at. Find your motivation. Love that. Uh, Kirk, like I said, every time I, start, I talk to you, it feels like I've known you forever. You, <laughs> you seem to be so, someone who's not in a hurry, someone who's got the patience, someone's got the empathy uh, and, uh, you know, the love for somebody who we haven't even met but I can just feel so relaxed and, you know, not feel under the gun, uh, you know, that, you know, I'm interviewing somebody and, you know, so it's been, <laughs> it's, it's been a tremendous learning for me as I take notes over here while talking wow, to you wow. and, and uh, for, uh, and for, for the community. And I'll never forget uh, composition with a K as K. a website. It should be <laughs> everybody right. who's listening to this now, tomorrow or in the future should be the, your go-to place for getting a website done. And if you Absolutely. have a media content technology strategy that you're struggling with, you want to go live and you feel everybody else is going live and you know, you need to be handheld from the beginning. Or if you mm -hmm. think you're already somewhere, but need to up your game, up your you game. Need, right. Yeah. You need to go to Kirk and get this done, as I will after this show. Kirk, thank you very much. And for thank all of you. you people watching, this is Avi Arya, father of two girls, six dogs, husband to a superwoman, a streetcar racer turned hotelier, now social media marketer and founder of Internet Moguls, bringing on more Internet Moguls like my friend Kirk over here. Thank you for all for your time and your patience.